Well, ahoy there, cuties. It's me, Stefan Satani, your host of the Comedy Advice Podcast. Just coming in, trying to swoon you with some dulcet tunes, some intro tunes before we get into the meat, the meat of this episode. Mm, and it's a good one. I can smell it all the way from here. Oh, man, what a good whiff. Guys, we have on this episode, Pete Lee. A very he's so nice it almost makes me mad how nice he is because um i'm trying i thought i was the nice guy and you can only really have one nice guy in a group of friends and so when you see another nice guy you're like dude what the hell i'm the nice guy and he's like oh <laughs> sorry about that buddy uh but i'm staying here and then you guys got to battle it out so it sucks but no we were so nice and we, we were like a yang and a yang we weren't a yang and a yang but we were like a yang yang so i've never seen one of those before but they when you listen to the episode you're like this is pretty delightful it's so good it's like having two mr rogers and we're wearing the same sweater it just seems like we're so in sync sitting by that little toy train set that brings them into wonder world or wherever the heck that place is i didn't really watch the show but pete lee he's an amazing person he also he shared the story of his first time going on the tonight show with jimmy fallon and he got a standing ovation and it was all thanks to the book slash movie, The Secret. And I ended up watching a little bit of that too, because I talked about it with one of my former guests, Ashley Rose. If you guys want to learn more about it, watch the episode, then go Google it. Okay. Go Google yourself a good time. Get a gaggle of Googles. And what else? Oh, his special, tall, dark, and pleasant, obviously, because he's such a little pleasant piece of shepherd's pie. Mm. Just some meat, peas, and a little crust little crust, but it's good. Nice and flaky and stuff. Not saying he's flaky. Oh my God. Here I go. Turning mean. No, don't mean that at all because he is nothing but a scoop of delicious ice cream. Just leaves you a little gassy at the end, but no. Whoa, here I go. Oh man. I'm turning mean. This apple is turning rotten and falling from the tree before it does. I want to say guys, well, Pete, I'm very sorry if you're listening to this, you're an amazing person. I don't know where that trail was heading. And uh, maybe some deep-seated jealousy. I'm not sure. But uh, also, follow Pete on Instagram. I think that's what his main ask was. So please, go over there. Link is going to be in the show notes. Just give him a little follow. And while your thumbs are warming up, we've got more links in those show notes. That show notes is like a big old bushel of abundant links. For They're, they're good for your heart, too. They're, I, doctors, 10 out of 9 doctors say that you will reduce a chance of stroke if you follow pete on instagram follow me on instagram in a comedy advice podcast or at s sitani and i should say and that's the right word and then guys guess what i'm doing a comedy advice podcast lives on facebook live so thursday night six o'clock pacific nine o'clock eastern time i'm gonna be there chuckling it up with yaks and yucks with all of you guys and you can interact it's going to be it, it the last one was very interactive i read the comments because i'm not a jerk and also it'd be very boring and weird if i didn't read all your comments but we had a great time last time and we're gonna have another good time this time so join the facebook group and join and have fun with us it's great we're gonna give advice together we're all in this together pete you you can come too if you want to we'll have two nice people and that'll be great I don't know why, where this animosity is coming from for Pete. Anyway, what else? Trash your treasure show on October 19th. Don't forget, click the show notes for the link to that. If the link is available, I'm not sure if it is, but that's going to be really fun. It's the second show that Lamar Mitchell JR and I are doing where comedians, it's going to be a tournament style where comedians, they're going to battle it out and we're going to give them a topic one is going to say if it's trash the other one is going to say if it's treasure the audience decides who wins yay gonna be so fun i know captivating all right yeah so go to that be there say hi to me give me an all give me a little um a hug i think I'm, I'm accepting hugs now i need hugs so after all this time with hug deprivation i've been counting uh, like you can't see it on that wall but i just take my car keys and scratch into the wall each day that I don't receive a hug. It's really weird too. Cause my wife is here and we've been there the whole time, but she's just not a hugger. She's a kisser and she's a fucker. So not in a bad way. I meant like we have a lot of sex, but she doesn't hug 
we definitely don't we we don't embrace in that way you know it's our it's not our love language so uh, any hugs i can get is what i'm trying to say are valuable so please give me a hug <laughs> if you go to the show or not i need a hug okay i think that's it so i'll end it there but you guys are amazing don't ever forget that i love each and every one of you I have my favorites, obviously, but you guys are all amazing. And there's not a single thing that I wouldn't do for you. That's a lie. Sorry. There are some things I got to set boundaries. All right. Here's the episode. Hey, Steven, how are you? Hey, I'm doing well. How are you, Pete? I'm doing really good. I um, I just went down a rabbit hole watching all of the clips um, on the comedy advice podcast uh on the Instagram and I love how you do the dramatic music and like the zooms. <laughs> it's so fucking funny. Oh my god. Thank you so much. That's oh my great. god, yeah. It was I was like cuz I mean the content was funny, but then the added layer of the music and the slow zooms. <laughs> I was just I was dying. Oh my god. Um I apologize. I just woke up from a nap. I uh yesterday was my uh was my birthday. And uh, we partied uh, like way too hard. And then I woke up and had to fly home from San Jose. And then I took a nap. And uh, so you're getting me post nap. But I figured I'd be honest that I'm a little crusty right now. Oh, no, I see no crust whatsoever. It looks right. like uh, you look like a fresh pie right out of the oven, I think. <laughs> <laughs> you, look, you, look, you look great. Yeah, I, I love the the get up too. It looks like you're about to do some recon on a bank heist. But I know, right? Like, do I, I look um, I look like uh, I look like a burglar that it's like my first time robbing someone, you know, and like I'm dressing <laughs> how a burglar thinks they should dress. <laughs> Like this is you know, dress for the job you want, right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's that's hilarious. It's like a a burglar apprentice. You're going for your first day of work, learning how to burgle. Yeah, to burgle. I I actually like have I have like the old timey sack where I'm gonna uh, like the Santa sack, but that's also a burglar sack. Uh, I'm gonna carry electronics out in a sack. Is what I'm gonna do. <laughs> um, the funny story about this and i'll i'll um uh i and the the improv doesn't know that i did this but um and i shouldn't admit it because it, it like it was illegal at the time i think but um mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. i wanted the vaccine really early and uh you know yeah. like i don't know there are probably people watching this or listening to this that you know they didn't want it or they don't want it but i wanted it and so uh, I did the show for the improv where they gave me an improv cap and an improv uh, thing and or improv sweatshirt, this sweatshirt. And so mm -hmm. I went to the vaccination site and they're like, yeah. I'm like, yeah, I work at the improv. And they're like, well, can we see your proof of employment? And uh, and like I had some pay stubs from them because I had done shows recently, you know, there. But mm -hmm. um, they're like, well, you know, do you have proof that you work at the improv? And I was like, yeah, I have these pay stubs. And then the guy goes, I can see you're just coming straight from work. And uh, I just, so my plan worked. Like I didn't even have to tell the lie, but uh, like I was a cook or a food service worker and then I got the vaccine. And then once you get the first one, you're in, you know? But yeah, uh, yeah so I, I uh, yeah. So this, this is my vaccine sweatshirt. Oh my God. Wow. That's mm -hmm. a, a, good for you. <laughs> I, you know what, Pete? I think you would probably survive in an apocalypse. I think <laughs> you've got the resourcefulness to just to dress the part. I felt a little guilty about it, but then also I think it was California was throwing away like thirty thousand vaccines a day, and I was like, ah, screw it. I'm I'm gonna be one of the thirty thousand vaccines that they didn't throw away. That was my rationalization of it. I like that. It. Oh my gosh, isn't that crazy too? That we have to throw them away. It reminds me of when I was a kid. My mom's like, "Eat what's on your plate." I mean, uh, you don't waste it. Now it's like, don't waste your vaccine. Take it because there are unvaxxed people in Africa and yeah. other countries. There's so crazy. many countries that we like. Uh, I read this article that um, that China is starting to kind of gain favor with a lot of countries in Africa. Like, you know how you know how England used to, you know, go in and give them resources and then rule them. And mm -hmm. um, and now uh, like China's figuring out other ways, like they can give countries tech or they could give them vaccines or whatever to curry favor with them. And then, 
they're essentially kind of a, a region of China now, you know, like they have loyalty to them. And I'm like, that is that is so smart. Meanwhile, we're just throwing away, <laughs> we're, we're just throwing away all these vaccines. It's it's nuts. So are you are you down in Phoenix? Is that where you're at? I am. Yes. I'm okay. Uh, in my little studio in Phoenix. Yeah. Oh, great. Yeah. All right. We we could have done this live later on this week. I'm uh, I started dating a girl that lives in Phoenix, and I, so I've been. Uh, whenever I go out on the road, I basically route my flights through Phoenix because I fly American Airlines. And so like I'll I'll stop down there for like a day or two and then I fly on to the next city. But um, yeah, I, uh, it's it's funny. I, I tape my special in Phoenix. Um, you know, I've been there a couple times. I met her in Phoenix, which is obviously really special. And then now I, I feel like I'm like splitting my time between L.A. and Phoenix. <laughs> and I was like, who knew at the beginning of 2021 that Phoenix was going to be such a huge part of my life? You know, huh? That is so interesting. And and by the way, congratulations on the new Phoenician girlfriend. Yeah, they are <laughs> Phoenician. <laughs> 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 that's fantastic. Oh my uh, God. That, that's really cool. I think Adam Ray, I had Adam Ray on the pod twice. And I think mm -hmm. he is also, his girlfriend's living in California now, but she's from Phoenix. So he'll come here and they'll hang out with the family and stuff. It's, you know, it's uh, when it's not scorching hot, Phoenix is a pretty <laughs> cool place to be. It's yeah. I uh, last week I was there and I was like, I was like, oh, I'm gonna go for a run. And then I just walked outside and I walked back inside. And uh, my girlfriend was like, "Quick run, huh?" And I was like, "Yeah, I'm not doing that. I'm like, I'm gonna die. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be one block away from your house and die. I'm gonna evaporate into this. It, I mean, it, it's so hot there. Yes, yes. You know, they say they say only like. 10 people die each summer, but I think it's because they can't count the ones that have just evaporated or burst into flames. <laughs> it's so, so hot. And it's funny, I actually remember, I ended up um, moving to New Jersey for a while. I'm from here, but I ended up moving to New Jersey. It's where I met my wife. She's from Brazil. We ended up meeting in Jersey, but I was thinking, oh, okay, it gets up to like 90s here, maybe hundreds max. This is gonna be cake, but I, I, Arizona, it doesn't prepare you for anything. I thought I would be like this this heat tolerant uh -huh. mogul, and instead I'm just like, oh my god, I'm out of the shower and I'm already sweating. It's just so humid. I couldn't stand it. Yeah, it, I I just went out to New York a couple of weeks ago, and I I lived in New York for 12 years before I moved in LA, or before mm -hmm. I lived in LA. Um, now mm -hmm. for three and a half years, and it's uh. It's so like I went back to New York uh, the other week just to do some shows and stuff. And you forget the, the humidity because I'm like an L.A. baby now. I'll be like, oh, it's kind of a humid day. And it's not humid at all. Like it's still we're still in the desert. All the moisture evaporates at night, you know, like like and during the day yeah. and at night. And it's and then I get to New York and it's like humidity that only comes from evaporating garbage. It's like like this weird garbage humidity. And I'm walking around just sweating through my shirt. Every single show that I did in New York, I w had sweated through my shirt like an old man that was mowing a lawn. <laughs> and I, I remember back in the day, I would see pictures of comedians on stage in New York City and they would be like, they all were sweaty. And I was like, man, they must be like, maybe New York comics are really hardcore. Maybe they're, maybe it's like, like a, like a heavy metal band or something like that doing comedy in New York. Like, like they must really be working on stage. And, and then yeah, I, yeah. I realized I'm like, no, they just came from another spot and they walked a block and then they sweated through their shirts. Yeah. Oh yes. Yes. That that's the thing too. I feel, I, I was thinking that too. It's a very good observation Pete. Yeah. And uh, I'm, I actually want to talk about some of the very keen optim op optimizations observations that's the right word from your optimus your... prime yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i wanted to talk all things prime on this podcast a comedy yes. advice podcast about transformers and all the <laughs> michael bay pearls of entertainment we've been getting no but but uh on your special is what i wanted to say about uh tall dark and pleasant which oh, was yeah. mm, oh so delicious and Dude, like thank you, you said uh, I, I have to say, too, I watched it with my wife, mm -hmm. and we we were both very remiss that we were not able to see it because it was 
oh so close yeah oh so far away but um i i loved what I loved what you did with the place because it looked. <laughs> the, there was this lovely. It was the lovely purple. You also had this um, stunning bomber jacket on. Oh which yeah, looked, I had it. Uh, I had it custom made from London. I actually I have it right here. I'm gonna I'm gonna show it to you. So it oh, looks please. a little. It looks a little different. Um, so it's uh oh it's so it's like a blue. I don't know if you can see it in the light. It's like a blue buffalo plaid. It's like a bluish purple buffalo plaid. And I yeah. wanted to I wanted to wear a bomber jacket on stage, but I wanted something that kind of like like represented, you know, like like because I feel like people wear shiny stuff during their specials. I feel like that's the time where you wear you wear a jacket that is like your Vegas jacket kind of during a special a lot of times. <laughs> yeah. But then yes. I also wanted something that kind of represented my Midwesternness and all that kind of stuff. So I was like, can I do can I do something that's a hybrid between a, a jacket that you should wear on a special and something Midwestern? So I went on this um, I went on this website that was like design your own bomber jacket. And it's uh, why can't I think of the name of it? It's based out of London. And I um, I designed it myself and then it was, you know, it was like uh give us your dimensions so i had to i went to cvs and i bought one of those like like tailor measuring tapes and mm -hmm, like measured mm -hmm. my whole body and did all that stuff and they're like this will be this will fit to the size you say and i was like oh i hope so <laughs> you know <laughs> i was like i sure do hope so um because otherwise this is gonna suck i'm taking a big gamble and um yeah and then i bought that and then uh i remember um why can't I think of the name of the com company? But do, do I, they I do it? Is it like a there's a is there an English term for bomber jacket? Is it like missile jacket? Or missile. Something like that? <laughs> <laughs> what uh, the Churchill? <laughs> <laughs> the church. <laughs> Churchill rain. Uh, that's what they called bombs. Churchill rain. Um, why Churchill droplets. Of, yeah. Churchill droplets. I'm. I feel like I need to give a shout out to this company. Um, so I'm going to, um, I'm just going to, I'm going to take a risk and type jacket into my, um, uh, into my Google in my phone and hopefully oh, something very will nice. come up. But Very nice. It, it is a, I will continue to compliment it by the way. Okay. I thought it was an amazing looking jacket. I would say smart choice, not wearing it when trying to get the vaccine because they'd be like, mm, sir, yeah. Mr. Mr. Showbiz over here. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, lumberjack that moisturizes. I don't think that you're a cook at a restaurant. I, I, I don't think I don't think this is legit at all. Um, lumberjack that moisturizes. All right. Apparently so it um uh, I'm gonna now I'm gonna put bomber into my do you ever type something like bomber into your Gmail and then just worry that you're gonna like like create a flag in a system yeah. somewhere? Yeah, I am worried about that. That that's going to trigger some sort of alarm. Uh, well, two fears. I mean, one, I'll be tracked and all my conversations will be heard. Or two, I'll just get retargeted for bomb par paraphernalia. So yeah, right. Um, like <laughs> either way, it's not a good look. My wife is like, "What's this over here?" I'm like, "Babe, I'm, I swear, I'm a peaceful man, and uh, I'm just yeah. trying to live my life." That's so that's so Instagram like you and I are like, yeah, I bombed on stage. And then Instagram's like, would you like to join the Taliban? Uh, they're like a new like they do sponsored posts. So um, they're kind of big right now. <laughs> oh, my, oh, my God. Yeah. Three simple steps to joining ISIS. Uh, do you yeah. like bombs? God. Yeah. I sidebar to that. Um, I think like I've. I, you know, I mean, I, like I grew, I'm, I just turned 44. I, uh, I'm not shy about saying my age. I'm a little bit older, but like, you know, I was like, I was a fully developed human during 9-11 and everybody was like, the Taliban is bad. And, um, you know, and then, uh, and then ISIS came along and ISIS kind of, you know, had the, everybody's attention. And it's so funny seeing like, like some of these influencers that I follow on Instagram be like, oh my God, you guys. So like, I just need to talk to you about the Taliban. Like they are not okay. And it's not all right. And like, we should, 
really do something about them and i'm like <laughs> it's, it's just so funny <laughs> there's this one girl that i follow who is uh she's a pro <laughs> surfer and she's beautiful and she's well spoken and she like is always posting about the books that she reads and she's yeah. not stupid at all and so when i make her sound stupid it like it's just because this post was stupid but she was yeah. like like we need to really rally and like the government needs to agree that we need to fight the Taliban. And I'm like, yeah, that's, that's literally like Dick Cheney. Like, like you're li <laughs> like, this has come full circle. This, this like <laughs> vegan super liberal influencer is now like having Dick Cheney thoughts that she, she's saying like, like a teenager, <laughs> like the Taliban is like, they're like not nice. You know, <laughs> I, I don't know if you guys have heard about this little organization, the Taliban. Yeah. It's it's like an influencer being like, have you guys heard of this thing called root beer? It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's like it's not beer. First of all, it's like <laughs> which. Wow. Like you can. That is wow. Um <laughs> Uh, it's all fizzy and delicious. It's almost like a soda. I think yeah. it might be a soda. Oh, which like it, it just makes me it makes me feel like whoever invented it was like really progressive. They're like, you can be something and then call yourself whatever you want. Like, I just <laughs> love it. Like, am I a beer? I don't know. You know, I, I love Ru it. Ru Root beer was the first soda that didn't identify as a beer. That's what, yeah. Uh, it, it was fluid. It was fluid, <laughs> and and we love it. <laughs> and it was so bubbly, and it came out for a little while, and then it's back. Root it's beer. Back. Root beer and the Taliban. It's just such a resurgence, if yeah, you will. But <laughs> it's just a resurgence of early two thousands Americana, and, <laughs> and what we went through. I just like, like it's just so. I feel like life is so crazy. Like, like two years ago, or like last year and two years ago, people were like, like, so like Nazis bad. And I'm like, yeah, we knew that. Like we all, we just had agreed upon that. Okay. Boomer. Like you're online. Okay. Boomer. You're a boomer. Boomers don't know anything. I'm like, but we knew we've known Nazis are bad and Taliban bad. Like we knew that. And then they're like, you guys <laughs> it's so funny. i feel like i feel like we need a a reverse for the i don't know what the generation is now is it generation z or is it generation i don't know i think i think we're gonna have to like i don't know if it's like um you know if it's like other things where we're, we're on gen z and then now it's going to be like gen double a you know how like it starts the, the double alphabet i think it's going to be double a next gen double a that that sounds like uh that sounds like a men and women new basketball league it's yeah gen double a <laughs> gen double a <laughs> the la sparks lakers uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I guess the Phoenix root beer coming yeah. to you. <laughs> God. Oh, so good. But uh, back to your, by the way, for your special, I know you talked about the bomber jacket. Yeah. And was there a plan B for a tire? Yeah. So, uh, so I, I ordered that jacket and I was like, I got the jacket. I tried it on and I yeah. sent the, I sent the jacket to uh, my manager and um and my agent and then uh, they sent the jacket to the production company which is comedy dynamics and they sent mm -hmm. it to showtime and they're like love the jacket pete uh make sure you bring two more options and i was like well okay uh i mean that that jacket was custom made and it cost 200 dollars, and it came all the way from england in time and so i was like all right i gotta i went on and i designed two more jackets and um and they're like well you know, just bring it back up in case those don't work too. And I'm like, well, what do I like? So I had to bring like a whole duffel bag full of stuff, but I'm like, this is the jacket. Like I, you know, and yeah, um, yeah. it was so weird because I was, you know, I was the executive producer on the special and, um, and I got there and they're like, eh, let's, let's kind of form a committee and see which jacket we like best. And I was like, this is the jacket. I was like, <laughs> I was like, I'm, does it look good on camera? And so like I went and I, and you can't really see the pattern as well, just the way the the lights were shining on it. But you still mm -hmm. could see little little pieces of it, you know, when I would turn. And mm -hmm. uh, and so I like I went and I, I went and did a camera test, went down to Video Village, saw it on camera. I was like, that's the jacket. And they're like, 
well, we want to talk about, I'm like, nope, the jacket. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I'm like rarely ever bossy and assertive like that. But I was like, it's yeah. the jacket I'm doing. <laughs> this is the one I just want to let you know. But uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> that was, I, I love that. And I love you just, I, I feel you are the enchanted peppermint kiss of comedy, Pete, which <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. that's, that's definitely not a Stefan original. That is, I stole that straight from Pete in the special. And let me say one more thing. Um, Wait, is your name Stefan? And I called you Steven at the top of this podcast. Yes, it is. And oh I my felt- God. Oh, oh my God. I am so sorry. I like, I, that is the worst. All right. I, Oh, um, Oh, please, please. Stephen, my mother... I apologize to you. And, um... Oh, thank you. <laughs> you know what? While we're apologizing, cause I also, I feel like we might be on the same wavelength of kindness. I don't think I wished you a happy belated birthday. So happy belated birthday, Pete. Oh, and thank you. Uh, you thank look you. younger than before. So oh, I, I feel I don't, like, Honestly, I yesterday I felt really young and then I had so much whiskey last night. It, I was performing at the San Jose Improv and yeah. I had so much whiskey in the green. We just drank in the green room afterwards. And then I woke up nice. today going like this is 44. Like I felt <laughs> 44 when I woke up this morning. I was like, well, you can't do that. And then I got home to my neighborhood and my neighbors are like, super enthusiastic they're, they're like we're celebrating your birthday tonight and i'm like i can't even imagine <laughs> like i can't even <laughs> that sounds impossible you know and uh <laughs> yeah yeah you're like well we'll celebrate my next birthday i feel like i'll be recovered by then yeah can we oh. i oh yeah i um and i'm somebody that like i can surprisingly handle my liquor like um mm-hmm. i have this friend that uh, his name's Ryan Reese and he comes out on the road and he opens for me. And I mean, he drinks vodka sodas, like their water, like literally water. And I drink whiskey and, um, I, I can drink a surprising amount of whiskey and he like, so he'll go drink for drink for me with me. And I walk home sober and he's like, Oh buddy. I was like, and, um, so it was Saturday afternoon. We had just gone out on Friday. We mm-hmm. went out drinking and, Ryan was like, dude, I don't even know if I'm going to be able to do the show. He's like, I am that. that, And he's like, he's like, what, how are you feeling? And I was like, I'm great. I'm like, I went and had a lunch and, uh, you know, like I, I felt nothing. And, um, my, my (laughs) girlfriend, Nicole was like, she's like, I can't believe that you can drink, you can handle your liquor so much that you broke Ryan. (laughs) Like you broke him. <laughs> I, I, the biggest drinker I know, I broke him, and I'm just like, oh, oh hey. But maybe, uh, yeah, I guess maybe today was payback for, um, you know, for I, like this is one of the first hangovers that I've had in I don't know years. Like, like I don't, I don't really don't get hangovers. I drink, I drink whiskey, and I'll have a water, and I have a whiskey, and I have a water, and then last night I was like, what if it was just whiskey? <laughs> Not a good idea. <laughs> No, no. That is a fan, by the way, fantastic drinking strategy, whiskey, water, whiskey, water. <clears throat> One that I fail to follow every single time. And yeah. I, I'm a, I like bitter drinks and my favorite, I went to go study abroad in Italy. Not a lot of my fans know this, but I studied abroad there. I speak Italian. I ended up wow. going and, uh, and I learned about the drink, the Negroni which I don't think it was very popular here yet. Yeah. At least I, I was 20 years old, so maybe I didn't know. I wasn't mm-hmm. at those speakeasy bars being like, oh, I'll take a Negroni, see? So, <laughs> <laughs> so I ended up going over there and, and tasting those. And oh, it was like a bitter nectar to my tongue at the first sip. And I thought, hmm. It's delicious gasoline. So I kept doing it very strong. And, um, but then I didn't realize my first time how strong they were. And so I, I'm kind of like you, I could hold my own. And I remember my girlfriend, I had uh, attained a girlfriend in Italy as well. And we rode our hot. bikes everywhere. Oh my God, hot. <laughs> Italy girlfriend, no. not she, as good she, as your wife, not even close. Is definitely what I'll say. not. Definitely um, not smart, yeah. smart, Pete, smart. Yeah. Oh my God. I can't believe you dated that slut in Italy. <laughs> Jesus. She... I hated her. All of your friends did. Um, you know, <laughs> uh, your wife is the like, yeah. 
Um, but anyway, tell me about this Italian girlfriend. She, oh, she she was. Uh, well, I'm about to ruin it because she was actually from uh, Westchester, New York, and so she was <laughs> New York garbage. She was just <laughs> trash from rye. So. Uh, like i'm picturing this like italian woman and then like you're dating this girl like whose whole family is like yeah you got to make america great (laughs) 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 she yeah she had a maga hat back in 2009 she was very forward thinking she was very forward yeah (laughs) in in, uh in some sort of aspect but no she it was kind of like that and uh yeah I, i remember we rode our bikes in this little town where you nobody drives and I was like, man, I feel pretty drunk. My girlfriend, she doesn't seem like she feels anything. And while I'm thinking that, I hear a crash. And she had just, <laughs> she tried to get on her bike and <clears throat> fell over like this and was just lying on the road, cracking up and laughing. <laughs> Fortunately, not her. But um, that was one of her many trashy rye Westchester moments. It was just, uh, but anyway, oh, anyway. Oh my God, that's, that's great. Back, back to you and your amazing special. Enough about my ex girlfriend, my oh, yeah. lovely wife. I could talk about for days, but um, yeah, I look. I I couldn't ever not. By the way, my um, I just have to tell you something that I won't. I would never show anyone this, but um, please. Whenever, uh, whenever my girlfriend, I don't, I don't think she'd mind if I, but. I'll just be on a podcast or like I've been doing a media tour uh, like for, you know, to promote the special uh, Showtime mm-hmm. Tall, Dark and Pleasant, which we've been talking about. Mm-hmm. And and Nicole will just send me like like a video like this. she just sent me one of like just her. She's working out right now. So it's just her tits bouncing in a sports bra. It was just that. And it was like a four second video, but she just does this because she she knows she knows that during the thing, if I see her name come up on my phone, I'm going to be like, oh, like I like I'm going to check this like I shouldn't be checking this during a thing. But and then she also knows that, like, the sweetest way to fuck with me is just bouncing tits and uh, and like she does this all the time or like I, I like, you know how comics like we go on stage at like eight o'clock or eight fifteen or whatever. Like yeah. eight fourteen, I'll get tits, and um, it's the best. It's like, it is so the best. Like, I've told her before. I'm like, you should, you should really teach a clinic to other women. Like, I know so many women that they're like, I don't understand why he's not into me, and like, she does all these little things that I just go like, like this is I like I can't pick up my phone and show you, but like, um, right, like, right. This is the most perverted, wonderful thing that like makes my heart grow you know like like i just saw that and i'm like oh i'm like fuck it i want to marry her jesus christ she's so fun and it's like it's not done in this like weird like dance club girl like slunny way like she's doing Mm -hmm. it in a funny way and she's trying to make me laugh and she also like uh but it's like it's so funny and and cool and like i just like i think she should write a book like hey girls um (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> like this is what this is what you should do <laughs> i i love that i think it's the way that you described it i would my wife did do that when we first were dating and um and now i do that i'll just send her pics of my tits in a sports bra to make her laugh <laughs> but i feel like a titty gram is just the best type of gram and you can receive it anytime and you just you can't be. You look at it, and it just makes you smile, no yeah, matter what situation you're in. You're just like God. I, I love you, and like, uh, yeah, it, like it was. Uh, yeah, it's it's like that's men's romance, you know. Like, um, like I, uh, um, like uh, I don't know. Like she'll she sent me like like she'll send me like sexy pictures like that, and then like like I've I've sent her some pictures that sort of mirror that in a way. And I've realized, like, no, that's not really what women want. Like, they don't really want to see you in a towel. Like, they're like, it's okay. And then I sent her a picture from this photo shoot that I did of just me in a suit, just kind of like looking at the camera. And she was like, that's the one. <laughs> like, so, so there's women's romance and then there's men's romance. And I think that we, I think a lot of times what's wrong in relationships is that, like, m- like women try women 
like they basically try to do women's romance back to guys and guys are like i don't i don't want that i don't want flowers on my birthday like i want i want the dirtiest i want you to send me a text that says i want to suck your dick on this island you know (laughs) (laughs) and that literally will make us go and i'm a clean comedian and i'm saying that like like i like that that text is like it as a man just makes you go like oh you know like like Oh, I just want to raise a family with her. Like we would like <laughs> I want to marry her and I want to have children because she would be the mom that like we could both turn to each other and be like, so the kid sucks right now. Uh you know, <laughs> like like you're cool, right? We would have a cool life together. Um oh god. Yeah, there's I, men's romance. We need we have romance too, and it's just it's disgusting. <laughs> it's what it it's, is. <laughs> Exactly. It's just different. It's a different language, you know, different letters, usually written with uh, whipped cream on breasts. That's yes. just how it's done. Because it and, and to your point as well, I remember I was in a suit for some sort of meeting and I ended up taking a picture. I was traveling for work and I took it for my wife and she was like, send more. Please. Yeah. And I was like, wait, really? This this does it for you? And she's just like, yes, the suit uh, loves loves this. It's a uniform slash suit type thing that I still I'm not fluent yeah. in this language, but I try every now and then. Yeah, so it's, it's so our version of the bikini pick. And now when I'm out with her and we're walking past a guy with a suit, I'm like, dude, seriously, like I'm I'm really covering her eyes. I'm like, you didn't see that suit. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of suit, I do have to say I have also seen you, Pete Lee, in a suit numerous times you because you've had numerous um, appearances on late night with Jimmy Fallon and you were the first comedian to get a standing ovation which yeah incredible des- well deserved by the way <laughs> thank I, you I must say and uh, I, I thought it was so cool I don't know if you are fatigued from narrating this story but I thought it was so cool how you uh, you kind of manifested this yeah. really special oh. moment. Yeah, I would love to tell this uh, this story. Um, and I'll tell, like, I hope it's okay. I'll tell the full story as well. Um, uh, oh, please. But, um, so I, you know, like in I'm comedy, you're, yeah, <laughs> there we go. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you did the double, the double <laughs> buckle up. I love that. You did, like the airplane pilot buckle up. I like that. Um, yeah, it, it like, um, it's it's a really interesting thing because like like in comedy and in in entertainment your career ebbs and flows you know like you Mm -hmm. you have high points where you're like oh this is it things are going to be great uh from here on out and then uh you go through another valley and i was in a long valley i was uh in a long valley and um i was like man nothing's going on in my career i don't know what to do and so one of my friends is like you should read the secret the book the secret And I still believe in the secret. I I believe that you put positive things out there and then they materialize into things like you point your the bow of your ship in in a direction and it comes true, which is the opposite of what most people think. They go, oh, no, no, like, don't jinx it. Like, like if if I'm a baseball, if I'm a pitcher in baseball, I'm the guy that in the third inning, if I'm if I'm pitching a no hitter, I'm like, I'm going to pitch a no hitter. Like, I want to talk about it. Like, I think that. We need Mm -hmm. to like, I I don't believe in jinxes. I don't believe in that. Um, I believe that you stay positive. And the worst case scenario is that you're positive and then you're wrong and you go, eh, I'm an idiot. But at least you're happy until then, right? Yes, yes. Um, I, 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 that was one of my questions actually was, do do you still practice secret stuff? That sounds very naughty. But yeah, the reason I I ask, (laughs) that sounds like I'm in QAnon. (laughs) (laughs) Do you still practice secret stuff, Pete? Yes, I do. (laughs) <laughs> Can you text me some of the secret stuff, Pete? Yeah. No. Um, but but I actually I, I had spoken with another guest about this too, and I did not read the book, but I went and watched it on Netflix. And and I have to say, while I do believe and I've started to practice it, and I feel like stuff has has actually appeared that I've tried to manifest, it was a little difficult to digest. I feel like maybe the the filmmakers didn't do it the justice that it deserves because it was a little little cheesy 
I a say. little cheesy and yeah i like i i yeah i watched it on youtube and it's like it really looks like the most low budget um like i don't know like like small market uh tv commercial production the secret the documentary and it's got like all this um like free licensed music that they've used you know like like that kind of <laughs> yes. stuff where you're like wait isn't that a ringtone like i can't believe <laughs> <laughs> i can't believe they used that song for this thing you're like wait what what Mom? they're trying what? to be dramatic right now and uh, <laughs> yeah. like, what um <laughs> they're using the ringtone that every girl uses for her birth control alarm you know <laughs> <laughs> like tinka 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 tink 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 um, <laughs> <laughs> that's a pretty good yeah it's a pretty good uh, yeah, we know we all can picture that ringtone right the one that like it literally like sounds like ovaries ovulating it's like magical <laughs> it's like <laughs> <laughs> um uh but yeah they uh, so in the middle of the thing there's this um there's this part where it's real cheesy where they go now's the time where you pause this program and you wish for something unreasonable and so i paused it and i was like all right my friend nate bergetzi um who i love uh he got discovered by jimmy fallon jimmy fallon actually came out to the stand and saw him one night and then the, mm -hmm. i heard uh, the lore goes that the next day they're like writing the sitcom together kind of a thing and I was like, mm. so I want Jimmy to come out. I want him to see me. I want him to love me. I want him to invite me on the Tonight Show. And then if I'm being unreasonable, unreasonable, I think I want a standing ovation. And so, uh, nice. so I, I wish for all those things. And um, what and, what year was this, by the way? Uh, this is 2017. And okay, yeah, 2017. So I'm uh, I get I think it was two days later I get an email that said, uh, hey. Uh, we had a fallout on our Tonight Show audition, which is always a good thing as a comedian to hear. Hey, we have a fallout on our audition, so you get to do it, which means they already liked someone else more, and then they probably asked more people to do it, and then they were like, okay, Pete Lee. And um, I had been trying to get a Tonight Show audition for forever, and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and it just, it, it was... Um, <clears throat> you know it it was just i i wasn't really in the running um and and yeah. also the tonight when i say this like i'm not talking about the current booker of the tonight show michael cox he's amazing um he's always been wonderful to me but the the bookers that were before him um they uh they were given pretty much a directive there that uh like they weren't looking for me basically uh they hmm. they were really only looking for comics that were making their late night debut um and you know, also like, I don't know, this sound, it sounds bad to say, but I'm, I'm like fall for it. They wanted to give comedians either their late night debut, or they wanted to give late night spots to people who were previously in a group that was overlooked is how I will say it. Um, mm. And I, and I know a, I have a lot of friends that would fit into that category and I saw mm -hmm. them systematically be overlooked for a long time. And so I was really happy that they're given opportunities, right. but, um, right. but I didn't fit into that, that mandate at the moment. Um, mm -hmm. and so, uh, you know, I was like, I feel like my route to the tonight show would be that Jimmy sees me, you know, like, I think Jimmy mm -hmm. needs to just see me and he'd be like, yeah, you know, like we can have this guy on. And so, uh, I get this, this uh, the tonight show audition. And I'm like, and it's on a Sunday. Like what audition is on a Sunday? They're like, <laughs> Like that's crazy, right? Like yeah. nobody's ever been like, yeah, oh, I got an audition this Sunday. So already something's weird here. <laughs> and I'm standing at the bar waiting for this audition to happen. And mm -hmm. I'm drinking a whiskey because I'm nervous. And the club manager walks by and she looks at me like, you don't know who's behind me. And then the owner of the club, uh, my former manager, uh, who is my the late, great David Kimowitz, he walks by me. And he's looking at me like, you have no idea who's behind me. And then the next guy is Jimmy Fallon. He's like, oh, hey, Pete, how's it going? Uh, uh, Dave told me to come out and see you because uh, it's a Tonight Show audition. And um, I, I, you know, I host the Tonight Show. And um, uh, I also live across the street. He's like the most humble guy on the planet, by the way. He's like, like 
Uh, really? He's, he's the best. He, people always go, is, J- is Jimmy Fallon the same guy? I'm like, he's the same guy. He's just the best. And wow. He was wow. just like, he's like, yeah. Uh, so I'm super psyched to see you downstairs and it'll be like really great. And the first thing, the first words that I said to Jimmy Fallon, I like, I was like, oh my God, the secret is real. Like I just said that. <laughs> and he's like, oh, cool, man. Uh, yeah. Secret. I don't, I don't really know what that means, but um, okay, cool. I'll see you downstairs, man. Awesome. <laughs> And so I was like, another whiskey slam. And so uh, I get downstairs and uh, like my heart's pumping out of my chest. Uh, the crowd is bad. They are like very bad for the first two comedians. And then the next comedian was Roy Wood Jr., who is impossible to follow. He's so, so funny. Mm-hmm. And luckily, Roy Wood Jr. took a bad crowd and like made them amazing because he's so good at comedy. Nice. And, and he regained their trust. And then the the host was like, I'm going to do a bit. And I was like, no, you're not. Bring me right up. <laughs> you know that <laughs> you know that moment where the, the host wants to redeem themselves? I'm like, not now. And <laughs> I go right up. I follow Roy's wave and I, I crush instantly. And wow. um. And I was like, just, I was like, this is amazing. This is the best case scenario. And in the middle of the set, I have a bit where I say, um, I I go, uh, I go, I I hate conflict. Um, Like I never want to offend anybody. Like the other day, this guy sneezed and I wanted to say, bless you. But instead I go, happy holidays. (laughs) And Jimmy Fallon stands up and he goes, yes. He goes, I love this guy. And I was like, what is even happening right now? And the whole crowd just roared because they didn't want to acknowledge him because in New York, everybody's like too cool to acknowledge a celebrity. But then once oh. they're in the room or once they open that up, then they're like, oh, the, the crowd is just roaring. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to say, uh, like, I, I, I was just like, thank you, Jimmy or sir. I don't know what to call you. I love I love you. Is that too soon? You know, and uh, and then I wanted to say, I love your your version of The Tonight Show. But instead, I go, I love your impulse control. And he's like, he's like, thanks. It's a problem for me. I've been working on it. Uh, love you. And, uh, and then after right after the show, I got invited on to the Tonight Show. And um, uh, yeah, and then I went on and, you know, I was so nervous. I was like, just so nervous riding up that elevator at 30 rock mm-hmm. and my heart's pounding. Mm-hmm. And then they had all these puppies on cause they were doing this bit where they, they, it was a game show called pup quiz where it was puppies and Giselle Bunchen, like, it, like, you know, supermodel Giselle Bunchen. And, um, <laughs> so puppies and Giselle and, um, and so they're like, I get there and there's just puppies running all around like that. Apparently like the gate got knocked over and they're like running around and the all <laughs> people like, are running. Oh my God. Yeah. Puppies. The and most adorable like, disaster. Yeah. And there's like regulations around, you know, animal use and whatever. So there's like, like one handler per puppy and they're all being like scooped up and Jimmy like ran over and grabbed one and he was like, Hey Pete, you want to hold a puppy? And I was like, he greeted me at the elevator. And was like, do you want to hold a puppy? And I was like, how can I be nervous when Jimmy Fallon already is here and cool? And then he handed me a puppy. And I was like, yeah, it's licking my face. Oh, my gosh. And oh. I was like, this is the best. This is the absolute best. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, they they start the show. You get dressed. Um, there's other guests on. Uh, Paul Giamatti was on. Um, and, yeah, it was, it was insane. Like, it, it was wow. so cool to be in the same hallway with him. And then Giselle Bunchen went up and she was charming and hilarious. And then uh, and then like, I don't know, the crowd started to get tired, you know, like like TV taping mm. crowds get tired. So mm. I, I'm standing backstage in my little suit, you know, just like ready to go. Like, all right. You know, um, yeah. all the best case scenarios are going through my head. The worst case scenarios are trying to get in there. And I'm like, yeah, no. Yeah. And Jimmy's like, all right, you guys ready for your next guest? He's a comedian. And the crowd kind of went like, "Eh." and Jimmy was like, oh, no, 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 this can't. No, 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 no. And uh, it's pitch black backstage. I mean, like, like you can't even see your own hand, like, like in front of your face. It's like so dark. And uh, and then there's God. uh, And then all of a sudden, this little monitor goes on. That's like right next to the stage. And like it comes on and you see Jimmy. Uh, walk from behind his desk and he's like, all right. He's like, you guys need to be warmed up uh, again. And um, he, he's like, I, I, I'm going to do a little bit of stand up. And um, so he like does stand up. So he's just like doing his favorite jokes that he remembers. He's a very smart guy. Uh, mm-hmm. Favorite jokes mm-hmm. that he remembers from the last couple of weeks about stuff. And he does like maybe, I don't know, five, wow. six minutes of stand up. 
the crowd's roaring and then he's like all right here's the reason why i wanted to do that uh he's like this next guest is really special to me because he's like i discovered him myself i went to a comedy club and i saw him and he's like i already consider him a friend so will you guys treat him like he's my friend and like give him all your enthusiasm and i was like what the fuck and there's this guy who there's a grown man who his job is to take the curtain and go like this and open it up for people this is this guy has the best job on earth he's like the coolest looking dude he's got like long hair and a ponytail like he he just looks like like he looks like the biggest chick magnet on earth and like his job is literally go like right this way you know and um so i turn to this guy and i go what is he doing he goes i don't know he's never done this before he's like he's never done this and i was like wow okay so um, wow wow yeah so i was like i was kind of freaking out like this is good this is bad what is this and um anyway so then jimmy goes back to the desk and he introduces me the regular way and i go out and the crowd is going nuts like like you're jimmy's friend you know like they're just they look like a crowd full of muppets they were that excited i was like this is already great and then my first joke kills and then the second joke kills and in my head i'm like these aren't even my best jokes. This, you know, every late night set builds. So I was like, wow, if they're this good right now, like wait till my closer. And, uh, and then oh the closer God. happened and it, it's, it's really interesting. And I, I give this advice, uh, not to be on the nose with the name of the podcast, but like, please, I give this advice to everybody who goes and does TV sets beforehand. You're going to be like, Oh, I don't, I kind of don't want to go out there, you know, cause you're scared. And then as soon as you get out there, you're going to be like, I never want to leave this spot. Like, and you, you need to go out there with the mindset that like, you already know that you're not going to want to leave. And, um, Mm. like I was getting to my last two jokes and I was like bummed out almost like, like I was, I was bummed that I'd ever have to leave that spot, you know, cause it just felt so awesome to be on that stage and standing on Jimmy's clover leaf that's, you know, embedded into the floor and uh, it, it was so cool. God. And then I, you know, I, I delivered my last line. The roots start playing. I get a standing ovation and uh, I'm just stunned. You know, um, I, I'm absolutely stunned. And a, wow. what, one thing that a lot of people don't realize is that, you know, we expend a lot of energy uh, doing stand up comedy. Like people go, oh, you only work for an hour a day or you work for half an hour a day. But like think about when you've given a speech. Um, and you're afterwards, you're just exhausted. It was seven minutes and you're like, Mm -hmm. Oh my God, we're doing that all the time. Like, so comics are always kind of like, we're like energy camels. We just like store it up and we expend it all during that thing. And, um, so I would just, I, I remember afterwards, I felt like I had used up all of my defense mechanisms for the day. Cause like, just to, just to get up there and do that and not freak out and you know and keep it together and be cool i had used up my whole like if it was a video game i would have been a battery that was just blinking red right and i had no more defense mechanisms left that day and the crowd stands up and i'm just i'm just staring at them like what is happening like and i um like at one point i looked above me because i thought there was a sign that said stand up like applause you know Uh uh-huh and there wasn't and then uh Jimmy was like, do you understand? He's like, he's like, you're going to standing ovation on the tonight show right now. And I was like, yeah, I just even like him saying that I was like, I was like, don't. And I almost didn't want him to say that. Cause I was like, and I told him I right on the spot and I'm still mic'd up and it's still going into the speaker system. I was like, I was like, I'm going to cry, Jimmy. I was like, I'm going to cry. And uh, I am like, I can't. And he's like, no, you're going to feel this moment. He's like, I know what this is like. And you're going to feel this moment. And I just like felt the moment and I kind of teared up and then, uh, yeah. Uh, and the cameras went off and then like, we did even more stuff and like, he, like, he's like, you're fucking, you're going to feel this. And the crowd is going nuts. And then he cut the part where he runs up and it was beautiful. And, um, yeah, it was, uh, it was, it was absolutely amazing. And then I, I go out in the hallway and supermodel Giselle Bunchen is running towards me. Uh, like, like we're two sorority sisters that haven't seen each other all summer. And so I start running towards her and we link hands and we bounce up and down and we go, yay. And I was like, what is happening right now? Oh my God. And she was like, that is so good. I'm so proud of you. You're on bubble. And I was like, 
thank you. I was like, well, um, yeah. Oh my God. Like we're colleagues. And, um, <laughs> and then the, the roots were in my dressing room and, uh, and there's a lot of roots and, um, oh, for sure. Yeah. Many and, roots. and I love the roots. Like if you looked at my top 25 songs that are of, you know, my favorite songs on iTunes on my playlist, it would be like nine of them would be root songs. And um, wow. so, and then wow. Questlove was like, dude, love you, man. And uh, the, <sighs> this person comes in with, with the guest book and it has Questlove's drumsticks in it. And so I'm supposed to sign the guest book. And I was like, Oh my God, Questlove gave me his drumsticks. This is, in, this is insane. Like, wow. Like I, my favorite drummer of all time. And he just gave me his drumsticks. So wow. I take the drumsticks, I shove them in my bag and uh and then i signed the guest book and i'm like and then afterwards um apparently i'm one of the only people that's really requested this at the tonight show they were like can we get you anything to drink and i was like yeah how about a bottle of mccallan and we we just drank mccallan in the like nobody does it like <laughs> i just was like game over a winner like i'm gonna drink at the tonight show and like everybody's too polite to do that and i was like yeah let's let's get drunk at the tonight show so we we oh, hung so out good. and me and all my friends, we, we drank whiskey. And then, um, uh, a few weeks later, my friend, Mike Vecchione's doing this night show. And, oh, love uh, Mike Vecchione. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's love awesome. him. And he goes, um, he said something about like, man, it's so cool that we get to sign quest loves drumsticks and give them back to him. And I was like, what? And <laughs> I was like, that's not, I was like, I, Oh God. And I was like, I thought those were a gift. I took them. And then all of a sudden, Michael, the booker is messaging me. He's like, dude, you got to give those drumsticks back. And here's where I'll, I'll do a visual. I don't know if you can see this, but I framed, <laughs> I framed my cue cards. And then I put the drumsticks in the thing because it was so cool to me. So I send him a picture of this frame that I'm showing you. I'm yeah. like, dude, the, the drumsticks are hermetically sealed under glass. And I, I can break the glass, but like, I was like, is there any way you can just send me other drumsticks? Doesn't he, is, aren't there any shows where you like use multi and there? He's like, that's what we're going to do. He's like, we're going to, he's like, all right. And so I, I, me stealing that meant that like Paul Giamatti got a FedEx. So did Giselle Bunchen, And then I did. And then I had to sign the drumsticks oh. and, uh, and then they had to like figure out a way to like replace them with quest level where he didn't know. And, um, so years or not years later, it was like a year later, I was Dave Chappelle throws this comedians bash and, uh, I'm up on the balcony of this place called the box and, mm -hmm. um, and Questlove's name is Amir. And so, um, I was like, Hey, Amir, he's like, Hey Pete. And I was like, is it okay if I tell you a story? And then I told him the story about the drumsticks. He's like, Oh man, that's hilarious. He's like, that's so fun. He's like, He's like that. Mean he's like they mean even more to me. He's like I'm so glad that you have them. And uh, so I got to tell him the story, and you know I felt a little bit better. I don't I don't do well with dishonesty, and so I, I got to like <laughs> I felt like I had a secret from from a root. And um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's that's like the full story. That's the the extended version. I've told it on a lot of podcasts and TV shows and stuff like that, but like, that's the full story. And uh, oh. so you got the exclusive, exclusive, exclusive. Oh, exclusive. And, and you know what? I'm glad, hold on, let me unbuckle. I'm glad I buckled up for it because mm -hmm. I was all over the place. So that was a, a bumpy ride, but such a beautiful one, a delectable, oh. delectable story. Pete. Yeah. It, um, it felt amazing. Uh, it, it just absolutely. And I mean, you know, everything that I feel like I've said in that story, you know, in just even in, including the, you know, the the thing that was the struggle for me to get on the show, the fact that The Tonight Show even was like, hey, we need to give opportunities to people that have previously not been given opportunities. Like, how fucking great is The Tonight Show? Like, how oh, how great are they? Like, just so every, everything top to bottom there. It's like they're so amazing. And um, this has nothing to do with that, but I just realized that my girlfriend sent me this message uh, a half an hour ago, and I haven't responded to a bouncing tip pick. But she know oh. she knew that she was or but video. Um, all right, I need to at it, least please, uh, please, no, please react. respond. Should we write a response together? What would what would a good response be? Um, oh man, how do you usually respond to those things? Is is um, it? 
nice or like thumbs up with the the balloon effects on the text or <laughs> fireworks <laughs> you know i think that so i have this joke with her where i go uh, like usually i go i go oh, oh my god my heart just grew you know or like like it's like like because she knows that that's men's romance um but but i think i think i need to i think i need to do a message effect with it i've never i've never done that combo before oh you should de- yes please do it and uh my heart is throbbing with love for you have you dropped yeah. the album yet oh yeah yeah i i okay. i love her so much i and Aww. which by the way all my friends are just shitting on me nonstop for it they're like they're like because her and i've been dating for seven weeks and they're like and you said you'd love her and i'm like but i do and i don't do well with like i felt like i was lying to her by not telling her you know and um pete uh, i i respect that so much my wife the first four weeks that uh we started dating i professed my love to her wait wait here let's craft the i'll tell you that story in a second let's craft this this message did you already draft um i uh all right so i think i think we need to send it with confetti um whatever it is beautiful um i think i think confetti is is a really good one um uh i uh I, right now the draft is oh my god my heart just grew um uh i could say oh my god my dick just shot out confetti <laughs> 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 i actually think she would think that was funny that's like some that's like right up her alley um uh, i i like that i like the confetti reminds me of a party you could say you just um made yeah. the best pants party for two with yeah. the confetti um i yeah you know please please stop me if you don't like it i know no i like I also that. i also i like that a lot really admire the because i was i was thinking about and, and hearing you on interviews where you were on greatest ever on true oh, tv yeah. just cranking out jokes like what was it like 200 300 per episode where you were just writing these jokes to see what you could get for yeah the it clips was- it was crazy. I mean, I, I've written for a bunch of different TV shows, and um, yeah, yeah, and it's um, it's an interesting process where you you have to go into this mode where nothing's precious, and you're yeah, you know, you're writing like two sometimes two hundred jokes a day, and your brain is you know your brain. All right, I'm I'm going with oh my god, my dick just shot out confetti and sending it to her. Oh, beautiful, um, beautiful. Uh, all right. And believe it or not, that will be romantic to her. But um, that's I uh, love that you guys yeah. are so so great. Oh, it's great! It's it's amazing. And um, but yeah, like you, when you write for one of those shows, you you know sometimes you have to write like two, three hundred jokes. And there's a yeah. point where your brain goes, "All right, I no more jokes. I can't think of any more jokes. I I'm done." But you know that you have to write more, and because you're trying to get through a packet, and you can't not right. finish your your work. And so, um, you know, and like, I know some comedians take Adderall and stuff like that. Uh, I find that Adderall doesn't give me any more creativity. It just Hmm. makes me think I'm being creative. (laughs) Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. I have so many friends that they're like, I took Adderall and I wrote the best script. And I was like, I read your script. (laughs) It's like, (laughs) it it looks like you wrote it fast, you know? (laughs) Yeah. My first thought was this person's on Adderall. Yeah. Yeah. That's what Uh, this is. And, uh, uh, but yeah, I, um, um, but yeah, I, like, I, I generally write that way. Um, I think that writing for all the writing for shows and writing jokes in bulk like that has helped me with my stand-up writing because I'll uh, nothing is precious and I'll I'll write a bunch of different ideas and then I'll I'll go try them and I'll throw them out there and the you know we always get kind of married to a, a joke where we're like oh this is gonna be the joke like this is gonna be like this is gonna mm-hmm. be my new closer mm-hmm. and then you try it three times in a row with a crowd and they all hate it and you're um like like they just they they all hate it like they they hate it and you're like well that's not the one but then the one joke that was like your throwaway that you're like i guess i'll add this into the list that becomes the one that people are like how did you write that and you're like i almost didn't do it I, you know, like that's so funny and and e- even jokes that are already great i you're uh, going back to tall dark oh. and pleasant there were some great jokes that 
I had heard a uh, a shell of them, or or even just like a, a polished version. For example, the one where you talk about you look like a person that likes to talk on a flight, and I am. I love it, and, and I think on uh, on the late night uh, where I first saw the joke. It was the the next line was something like I sit in the middle, um, so I get more options, which was also on the special. But then the next line was like, "Oh, you like to talk about putting headphones on?" Or I'm butchering it, obviously. Yeah, yeah. And then and then you branched out on the special, and you had this punchline that just that that one was good, but then this one just totally killed. So you just oh, thank you. Have these transformation, these beautiful butterfly bits. That... <laughs> yeah, there, there's been a there's been a metamorphosis of the joke. <laughs> but I mean, isn't that how jokes go? Like you you're always tinkering with them, you're always working on them, and then a lot of times you do you do the joke. Um, and I want to say like you do the joke on late night or you do the joke on TV, but the real, really the new thing is you do the joke and you put it on your Instagram and then all of your friend, your fans and friends have seen it. And it's like, you burned that. That's like the new way of burning it is, um, mm -hmm. is doing that. But then you're like, but I, I just burned it. And now I want to keep doing it. Cause I have more new ideas and I have something to link it to. And, um, yeah, I like um, David Tell. Uh, I'm really proud to say that he's a good friend of mine. And uh, I feel like that's oh, wow. a thing that I've, I've learned from him is that like a joke is never done. And as soon as you think that a joke is perfect, you should break it and then try to make it better or try to add tags or, you know, try to like try to get uh, people more invested in the setup of it. Like I always try to. I always try to have some sort of an emotional trigger in the beginning of it where, you know, it, cause like I do decently clean comedy. Like my next hour that I'm doing is going to be a little bit dirtier than my last one. And maybe, maybe by the time it's finished, it will be cleaner. But um, like, I'm going to like, and I know that I opened my last hour talking about cocaine, but I just thought that it'd yes. be, I thought that it'd be funny to talk about the one time that I did cocaine. Like, like what does cocaine look like on a guy like me? You know, I think the, yeah. the juxtaposition between the two things was a fun way to start the special. And um, <laughs> like, and I also, that's just like a general belief about a lot of stuff in general it, it is like, people are like, Oh my God, I do cocaine. I'm a bad guy. And I'm like, you're an insurance agent from, <laughs> from peoria illinois like you're not a bad guy you just you just you your friend had an upper and you took it like you're still yeah. you're still named scott you know like, like it's yeah. just yeah it like i don't know i think people sometimes want to be they have this like fantasy that they're a piece of shit and i'm like you're just not you don't qualify like uh <laughs> yeah <laughs> like you're really like you don't have warrants out for your arrest okay like <laughs> like you settle down yeah. yeah and so i i wanted to kind of tell that version of it of like yeah you can do this thing that seems so extreme but you're still the same person and you just had a weird night you know um yeah, and you executed you executed that beautifully, by the way. And I was in st I was not expecting the premise and the story, <laughs> and then just the punchlines were great too. I remember when you, you after you took the hit, I mean, not literally on stage, but you're like, "Oh, jeez, Luis!" Or yeah. I can't remember what it was, but it just yeah. Had I, I think that's the the first line where I'm like, I, I say that I just got more more Wisconsin, and I'm like, yes, yeah. Yes. I'm like geez louise oh yeah yeah and um yeah it's so good that's one of those bits where in my new hour um i've written i've written a couple new opening bits that are like like so strong and they're a great opening bit and i'm like ah oh, that's my opening bit and then i i find myself wanting to like keep writing opening bits um because mm -hmm. like i'm a big fan of the the structure of an hour i think you need to have these things where if the crowd is waning a little bit like all of a sudden boom like you put the jumper cables on them and and you like jump start it and it starts you can you can basically start over whenever you want like energy mm -hmm. wise like like mm -hmm. or, or like jump start the crowd basically and yeah. um so like the the couple opening bits that i've i've done um those are now kind of like the opener to a new chunk of stuff and uh you know I always bring openers with me on the road that are that just 
burn the shit out of the room and they, you know, like, cause I want to follow, I want to follow heat, you know, like I want to follow people nice. that are just torching the place. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of people will bring an opener that like, it's almost like a cupcake game, game in football. You know, it, it's Alabama mm -hmm. playing Louisiana Monroe uh, tech or whatever. Yeah. And I don't want that. Like I want a challenge and especially writing this new hour. I'm like, I'm like, man, this is tough because I used to have the confidence where I could go out there and I could do the cocaine bit and it would just I could follow anybody. And mm -hmm, now I'm trying mm -hmm. to figure out like, well, what what bits do I have? Like what bits have I written that can follow anybody? And um, this last weekend in San Jose, I was following my friend Ryan Reese, who he does warm up for Seth Meyers and last week tonight with John Oliver. And like he is wow. a like he never fails and he's so funny and he's so interactive with the crowd. And I was like, I was like it just it dawned on me that like my like my uh like those opening bits that i had shifted towards the end i was like oh i need these now <laughs> and so now in the writing process i'm trying to figure out what you know what more opening bits uh you know i could write mm -hmm. um because i need them like I, I i need them i need this hour to be really strong and um it, it's always interesting like we've seen people's comedy specials where you're like oh it's so evident that you went out and you were touring and you were, you were warming up your special for your crowd, like your fans that were just telling you across the board, like, this is amazing. And it was, it's like, okay. And I don't even think that it's the fault of the comedian necessarily when that happens. I, yeah. well, maybe it is. I, th I think, you know, like if you look at what Bill Burr does, Bill Burr will go up at the comedy store and he's not even advertised. So it's like not even his people. There are a lot of people in the crowd that love Bill Burr, but then about half of the crowd is like, who's this fucking red haired, angry guy, you know? Yeah. And, uh, yeah. uh, and they, you know, they may like him or may not, but like he, he makes sure that his new material is great to them and to his fans. And, um, you know, and that's why his, his stuff is so great. But, uh, Jezelnik does that too. I mean, Jezelnik will, like around LA, like he'll do any show. Like he's, he's on any and every show around here. Cause he just wants to make sure that his stuff is funny, not just to his fans. Um, but I don't know. Yeah. Hopefully. And so hopefully I can make this next hour, you know, as good as the, the last That's, one. Oh, I have no doubt that you're going to. And it was, I heard you on an interview saying you basically, after you shot the special the day after you started writing, cause you're like, Oh, I got to do another, I got to keep writing and make new material. Yeah. So. And it, it was crazy. Like I remember I was in Irvine, California. And so the special came out on July 9th. Uh, and then on the 10th, there were people that came out, like they just saw it and then they looked me up and then all of a sudden, boom, the Irvine improv was full, which, uh, the, that place holds 650 people. I mean, it, it is a like Whoa. old timey show palace is what the Irvine improv is like it it's wild how many people that place holds wow and um uh so i mean full and then people were coming up to me afterwards and they're like we can't believe that you just wrote a new hour since yesterday and i'm like oh that's funny <laughs> <laughs> i'm like oh that's hilarious that's uh <laughs> That's really cute that um, that you think that, that I did that live yesterday. And uh, <laughs> that's funny. But no, I mean, it took me. But, you know, normally it takes about a year to to write a new hour mm -hmm. or maybe two mm -hmm. years. You know, you just you yeah. just don't know. Um, uh, and I, I've written um, I've written probably an hour and a half. And I think, you know, I'm still tinkering with it and I'm trying to figure out what like my favorite thing is. But. I'm probably going to write another half an hour worth of material before I'll like really be able to consolidate it into like, Oh, this is what crushes. And this is the hour, you know? Um, but it's, it's been fun. It's, it's like a, it, you know, like I, I, it used to be scary to write and now it's the thing. It's the thing that drives me. It's the thing that I love. And I don't necessarily even sit down and write a lot. I, I get like little ideas. I punch them into my phone, into my Evernote. And then, I like I will allow myself before I go on stage, like maybe a minute or two to grab like key phrases because in yeah, my head, yeah. I'm like, I'm like, if I can't grab it really quick, it like it's not good enough to say um, mm. like it's mm. just not good enough. I need it needs to be so substantial that I can take two keywords from it and just know what the, the timing is, you know, 
or, or what the what the um, I don't know like that that's my hmm. that's my barometer for whether or not a bit is good is if it's easy if you know you know when you have like a bit and yeah. it's like it's the next bit and you go oh god this one's hard uh if i don't get the timing exactly right on this bit it's gonna bomb and uh yes. and you're like oh man this better be good and sometimes you do it right and it feels great and sometimes but like i like the bits where you go oh this is so funny that i i get to like not phone it in but like i get to just enjoy this one and so that's mm -hmm. that's what i want to i want to get to that point where there's no there's no bits where i'm like oh i really gotta really gotta step it up for this one you know performance wise <laughs> <laughs> oh man well pete i feel well i, I feel delighted dazzled to, to have been spoken <laughs> with you and uh, to watch your special, which link is going to be in the show notes. And I feel like I could speak with you for days, really. Yeah. And yeah, I, I, we're, I, yeah, we're, you and I are friends now. We're like, we're, we're friends and we got to hang out sometime when I'm in Phoenix. And uh, like now, now that I, I share time there, uh, it's so funny. My, my girlfriend, she has never been a fan of California. I don't know what it is, but, um, Huh. Uh, she loves Arizona. Um, she's originally from Oregon and, um, uh, she, I don't know what, I don't know if it's like the, the Portland thing in her that she's just like, fuck California. Um, but I just grew up being like, California is awesome. And now I live here and it's awesome. And so she's yeah, yeah. splitting her time here cause she works in tech and she can work anywhere. And, um, nice. uh, and she's like, God, I can't believe I'm really enjoying California. She's like, don't, <laughs> don't tell anybody that I know that I'm enjoying it this much, but I do. That is so great. It's, it, I think the thing that irks Arizonians or Phoenicians mm -hmm. is people from California will come over here. Um, so, and a lot of them come over because it's so cheap, mm -hmm. but then they'll be like, I'm from California. California is way better. I'm uh -huh. like, well, why are you living here? Exactly. And that's the, it's those Californians there. It's not all Californians. Um, but, and, and I enjoy California quite a bit. I love California, but just those specific, that faction of people that come over here, but it's like, it's like the guest that comes in your home and they're like, Oh, this is a great, great house. It's not quite as good as mine, but you know, the, our counters are almost the same except mine's five feet bigger. So yeah. You know, oh God. Yeah. I know those people. And you're like, you know, like, why am I friends with you? Why did I? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. All right. Well, I feel like I've kept you for so long so we can uh, wind this podcast down. And, and again, Pete, thank you so much for joining uh yeah I, I want i wanted to ask what uh what have you got going on what would you like to plug where can people follow you all that good stuff yeah let me um so uh if you want to uh come see my tour this fall um uh first of all i don't uh, i'm i still am working on a phoenix date i need to get a phoenix date this fall um because i want to come back to the tempe improv uh nice. i was just at cv live and stand up live is down there so Oh, nice. Um, but yeah, uh, if you want to look at my tour dates, they're on peatley.net. Um, I just, I really want people to follow me on Instagram. If everyone that listens to this could just follow me on Instagram, that is the currency that is worth the most uh, to everyone in entertainment right now. So follow me at peatley, peatley, peatley. I'm also on TikTok at peatley, peatley, peatley. It's my name three times in a row. If you type in P E T E L E E, peatley, peatley, peatley will come up. Um, three please Pete. follow me. Love it. Yeah. Three Pete. It's three, three Pete. I, <laughs> that is so funny. I've said that so many times. And I never even thought three Pete. That's really funny. <laughs> nice. Great writer. Great writer. Very witty guy. <laughs> no, no. Very witty guy. Um, oh, no, no, no. Stefan. Not, <laughs> not Steven. I'm an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> oh no not at all uh, uh on the other end of the spectrum perhaps yeah. gene and, and genius if i if i must say <laughs> oh man all right well hello dearies we've made it here watch your step and take my hand as you get off this episode but before you do don't forget to take a little pamphlet that gives all the information on how to follow pete on instagram show him some support watch his special and follow me on Instagram at a comedy advice podcast or S Sitani. Don't forget to join the Facebook group. We've got a lot of fun over there and we do Facebook lives 
by we, I mean me, but I guess we, cause we do it together and you guys are commenting and in there and it's totally interactive Thursday, six o'clock Pacific time. It's nine o'clock Eastern time and trash or treasure October 19th. Don't forget to subscribe, leave a review, tell a friend and tell me how much you enjoyed the episode. Thank you guys so much. And big old gooch smooch. Bye.